I will, I will talk about a bit about Shaft, which is uh, not only a movie, well, a couple of movies, in, in fact, uh, but about some other thing, which is called Fa Shaft, which is a tool we made at uh, the company where I work for um, a couple of projects. Yep. Because uh, in the systems area in our company, we were, we were, we were uh, making a lot of uh, shell scripts and we even made some important things which were somewhat mission critical, which were mostly shell code in GNU Bash. So we reached a point where it was becoming very difficult to test whether everything uh, was uh, working as expected. So, we thought, uh, we thought about making something which could help us uh, to test whether everything went, went right. And so what Shaft, uh, apart from a funny name, which is, or, or funky, is, is it, it's an acronym for Shell Advanced Functional Tester, more than functional is declarative. And if, if, we would, if we wanted to say what it's in, is for shell scripting, tries to be simple, but it's a bit hairy in the implementation, but this is a lot making test cases. It's somewhat declarative, not a lot of, the, not, not very well get this thing of declarative unit testing, but at least uh, it saves some time. Well, a lot <laughs> in reality. And it's for unit testing, as I have said before. And it, it, it's, it's a, bit, uh, a bit strange to talk about shell scripting and unit testing in the same phrase. So I, I wanted also to highlight what it's not or which, uh, um, which not so good parts it, does it have. For example, it is only for Bash at the moment. I suppose that it would be possible to port it to KSH, SH, but it's not very straightforward. Uh, so it's uh, somewhat simple. So if we wanted to do very complex things, uh, probably it w we will uh, shoot ourselves with our feet. But, and and you, have, you still have to write tests. It's much easier, but uh, uh, not uh, totally avoidable. So uh, this is logic, <laughs> after all. And it's not the solution for all our problems related to shell scripting. So, well, uh, I, I already commented out uh, some things why some mot motivations because we started this small, tiny project, which is really a, 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 a side project uh, of, uh, of other bigger things, and we were reusing it from one to another. And the main reasons because uh, we did this is because, in general, people doesn't quite want or like to write documentation because it takes a lot of time. And something similar goes to unit testing. It's something you want to do and you have to do sometimes because it's good, <laughs> but it takes a lot of time. So one of the motivations was making it easier so it could take less time and, 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 and be, be, being more convenient because uh, we have found a couple of uh, ways of making testing in Bash, but it was some, somewhat cumbersome. So we went, uh, we went down in the, in the code and decided to do something about this. And why or what's the reason which could argue this could be relevant or interesting for someone uh, working at a Linux distribution like uh, Debian? or others, <laughs> there are a lot of them. Well, if we take a closer look at uh, packages and the things they include, we could find something like this. The, in fact, these are real numbers taken from the latest established Lenny, uh, Debian Lenny, and there are some parts of the distribution which are some, somewhat important, <laughs> and they should not fail. For example, the, co the shell code in the initial run disk used uh, both for the, the live CD-ROMs and for installations, for, set, for initial setups, and for booting the system. They contain about 1,200 lines of code in shell, shell code. The init scripts, then those ones which go in slash etc slash init.d, 
they, they are about 3,000 there are about 3,000 lines of code, but it starts to become um, relevant when you, you reach uh, the package, the package scripts. And I refer to the scripts which are run before installing a package of once the package has hit the file system, brainstorm posting uh, scripts. Mm, taking into account a typical installation with no X Windows system, with about 200 installed base package, base package, it's about 17,300 lines of code. Well, not all of this code is relevant because most scripts in, in this 200 set of packages are only uh, one-liners or two-liners or at most five or six lines. So there, is, there will be no need to test those trivial scripts. But there are others which are quite complex. For example, the ones which update the grab, the bootloader configuration, or, or the kernel package, contain some longer scripts which uh, could affect uh, the system if the package is not installed correctly or if the script has uh, some problem in, in its code. And if we take a look at the entire file system, this is something which someone in general should not, should not try. <laughs> because it takes a lot of time um, identifying with file the, <laughs> the scripts and counting lines. It's 90,000 lines of code. Of course, not of all are uh, interesting for testing, but maybe there could be something in Debian which could be tested. And the point is that, as far as I know, uh, I tried to ask and and nobody told me whether there was a, some way of active testing and automatic testing of uh, distribution scripts. As far as I'm concerned, there are no testing, no automatic testing, which uh, probably would, be, would not be interesting once the code is done, because you theoretically have already something which works, but could be interesting uh, for avoiding regre re regressions when making new releases. So, for important things, it could be an option. Well, I have already said <laughs> some things like that. And for example, the Debian installer, I was trying to, to search yesterday whether, the, uh, whether it was being tested or not. That's why the exclamation mark is there. But I, uh, at last, I have been able to download the source code, and, uh, and there is no automatic testing either in the Debian installer. Well, there are a set of existing tools also in, for, in Bash for testing shell scripts. <laughs> Interestingly enough, the advanced shell scripting guide for GNU Bash recommends using echo or printf <laughs> for doing testing, which is tricky <laughs> and not very good, as, as you probably know. Then there is set uh, minus x, which uh, will print out traces of every command and shell expansions which are being done during the run of the script, while well, the script is being run. But uh, if you have a complex script or a long script which runs for, for a while, you will end up with a very long trace log of what, uh, what your script is doing. And it can be very, somewhat difficult to follow uh, how things are being executed. So in, in reality, in, practic in, pra in practice, they are only useful. M minus X is only useful for as for small things, or at least that's uh, at least that's what uh, what w we thought before before as well what we thought uh, and and when we made this this tool. There is uh, two more not well not very well known uh, bash flags, which are minus U and minus V. Uh, the first one uh, warns about undefined variables, which theoretically sounds great, but uh, in practice uh, is not that great. For example, if you use bash arrays and you have an empty array and you try to determine how much items are in the array, you will get a warning about an undefined variable. But it's empty, not really undefined. So, so the, it, 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 this option can be even more confusing than, than solving things. 
and minus v, what does is uh, um, warning about, well, I don't remember exactly <laughs> what it does, and the finite, and the other one, ah, yeah, the other one, the, min the minus v, one's about uh, variables which have never been defined, so, which have never been assigned, sorry. So, it's somewhat uh, interesting, but the, the application is limited. And then we have found then the, that there are two things which uh, could be useful, and in fact they are somewhat useful, which are a debugger for, for GNU Bash, which is Bash DB. It's a bit tricky to use, but it makes the job. And then it is an XUnit-like uh, a small library which you can source in your scripts to make unit testing. So at first, we tried to use SH unit 2 before rolling around tool. But uh, as we had a lot of uh, test cases which involved, involved file system operations, um, we ended up with very long test cases, uh, especially the parts used for preparing up the environment and the like. So it was a step forward. But this was no, not, not the perfect solution at all. So I would consider the fourth one a failure. <laughs> they are useful, but they have a very limited range of application. And for the other two tools, well, maybe they could be useful. They are useful, in fact, but uh, not as easy to use as one would expect. The, the good thing about SH Unit 2, now that I, I recall, is that uh, it works with uh, any decent shell out there, GNU Bash, uh, set SH, and KSH mostly. So, in fact, it's, it's quite portable. And if you, you want your scripts to be tested and used with different shells, I, I would go for it because Shaft works only for GNU Bash. And you may be curious about how testing is done using our tool, so I, I will give a, a quick example to see how, how the thing looks. Well, it's uh, laid out this way. We decided to build upon SH Unit 2 because we, have, we were already using it in some places, and we, we didn't want to throw it away and start again, so it started as a side uh, as a side thing, which uh, we, we were trying to avoid, but uh, we um, made the most out, out of it and we, we ended up building on it. And the best debugger, uh, we use it, we use it uh, because uh, we wanted to be able of stopping executing in certain places and modifying the environment before making particular tests. And uh, having a debugger, a debugger under, under our code allows for, for example, uh, if, you ha if you have a, a script which tries to download something over the network, for example, using wget, you can skip that particular instruction or, that, uh, or some lines and, and then place the supposedly downloaded file in the file system artificially so you can run the, the test suite automated without requiring network access, which is a good thing, for example. We have used it for this kind of uh, corner cases in which you need to do something automatically which depends on external things which are not part of, uh, of, of your code. So that's why we use it as well. And how, how this affects the code we already may have in a script and how we write test cases. Well, uh, for being able of stopping at certain places and making tests, we decided to go simple and to put uh, some marks uh, with comments in the code. It's, not, it's far from perfect because theor theoretically unit testing says that you should not uh, need to know what's in the code to test it. So we are not really doing perfect unit testing here, but it's very convenient for uh, it was very convenient for us this way because we had a lot of uh, pre-existing scripts which were not structured at all. They hadn't functions. You couldn't uh, source them because they, they had uh, side effects. So there w it was not possible 
to import them into another running script and test individual parts of the code. This way, we can add the marks and test some parts without modifying a lot the, the original code. So this was a necessity at first, but it turned out to be convenient, in fact. And then uh, one could, uh, should write some proof files, which uh, are a mix of uh, bashdb command script uh, commands, and also a set of commands which are implemented in, in Shaft and, and which provide additional facilities to make testing easier, which is the final goal of all this thing. And then write a small wrapper script which imports Shaft and, and starts running the tests. This may sound like a stupid idea, <laughs> in fact, because uh, it could be a command line option to specify which uh, source file you want to test and the like, but as we will see later, it allows for adding common environment things into, into for, for all of the, of the test cases. Well, the marks, for example, this is a, a very simple script, which I made yesterday as an example for today. And just imagine that we wanted to test whether we're entering the if clause, so we can stop her here with where test O2 is uh, written with a, with a pound mark and a plus. Or, for example, test whether bash actually makes assignments in the expected way and stop after the assignment of H equals 45. So mm, our scripts need very little modification for being tested with, with shaft. The, the bootstrap script which runs the which runs the test is also very simple. It's only a matter of defining what we are testing and adding a relative path to the directory which contains the test cases, one test case profile, and sourcing the, the library, library in quotes. <laughs> and we could add here functions, shell functions, which would be inherited by all the test cases. This is interesting because um, a hook function can be defined in each test case for preparing the environment, and that function can use the things uh, defined in the runner script. For example, I told you before that uh, we were using this tool for testing scripts which uh, had a lot of side effects on the file system and needed a, st a starting environment in the file system. So we defined a common a common function for preparing the disk layout in the runner script, and then we um, used it from all the test cases. So the, the, each, each test case only contained actually the statements needed for testing, and the preparation of the file system was isolated in this other file and common for, for the cases, so no code was duplicated. So it saves a lot of time. And this is actually how, um, how a test case looks. Uh, well, uh, it's a, a strange mix of uh, bashdb commands, shell functions, and, and our own commands. For example, GT is a command defined in shaft. And there are two hooks which can be defined here, apart from other functions which will be ignored. So you can define, for example, prepare foo and call it from a, a hook which is called prepare. Uh, I, I have not uh, put a prepare hook here for simplicity. And the breaks hook uh, well, uh, sh should define in logical lines of code where do you want to stop. So if uh, the, the mark used for stopping in this proof is the name of the proof, test01. If you recall, I had uh, a mark over there in the code. So it would stop just after, uh, just after the command, which has the test of one. If, if I could say uh, there could be spaces after the, the marks for stopping, because uh, the numbers here, in the, which define the place with, where to stop, are logical, logical numbers. So spaces and commands are ignored which is uh, pretty convenient, especially if you are making cosmetical changes, like adding white space and the like, which sometimes happens. 
And so what, what, good is, what good this one do? Well, set a breakpoint at the mark, at the next line of the mark with test 01. Start running the thing. There is a reason why there, there is not an implicit start. And it's because uh, there are comments for defining environment variables, uh, a message which uh, would be printed in case of test failure, and some other similar things. So uh, I think it's better this way. Because uh, if, if there was an implicit start, one would have to restart the executing after defining that kind of things. So it's uh, a matter of taste, probably. And here, well, the syntax is uh, something like in fixed syntax. And it's this way because the parsing of all of this is done in bash. And it's not very easy to make a parser in bash, <laughs> as you probably know. So what the last line really says is we are checking that something is greater than zero, and what we are checking is the, the rest of the line. If the rest of the line uh, prints something which is greater than zero, so the test will pass. It's, uh, it's a bit funky, but actually it's understandable. This is another example, for example. <laughs> if you recall, I had a inside the if block, uh, another mark for, for stopping, which was test 02. And we, we can print a dummy string, because if, um, if the script does, uh, execution does not go inside the if block, this, uh, this sentence will never be executed. So we, this way we are checking whether we have entered the if statement. If, um, if the if the statement was not uh, being run, the the code inside if uh, this uh, the check would be done even so, but the output would be empty, so the test case would fail. It's a particular thing of testing whether a code path is following what it's supposed to do. May seem a bit strange at first, but once uh, you have your marks set. Uh, it's only a matter of adding one line to check, uh, to check for, uh, for, for each one of the points you want to know whether the executing was there. So it's pre pre pretty convenient after all. And we could even, this is a, a, quick, a small sample of how it would look if we wanted to do the two tests in the same proof file. Well, it's more, more or less the same. But we, con we continue executing until the next stop is reached. So it's pretty straightforward. And if we run this, and the, the example runner is the script which would strap the thing, as I have uh, said before. And look something like this. If some test fail, it would be, it would be reflected in the, in the results at the end. And well, one thing which is not here in the slides I will try to put a big, a big shell here. Okay. Well, this is very big. Whoop. Yeah. For example, you get for free. Oof. Aye. You could get for free. Common line parsing for. Common stuff for, for like uh, running on only a single proof if there are more than one being verbose. Another thing which is uh, which is interesting if that is that uh, if if you tell the minus d switch on, it would create a, a log file, which for example you could ask someone to send you by email, uh, which may be good for example if you. If you are delivering your, your shell scripts to some user, and the user say, hey, my, the, your shell script does not work. And you can say, well, run the test suite and send the results to me so I can tell, actually, whether it's your fault or it's the fault of my code. So the, the logging mode is uh, interesting. Here you have the, the, the logs. And for example, to, see, to check whether it's convenient to define the, the prepare hook, as I said before. I could edit this one and, and add a, a prepare function here. 
and print out something to the to the console. So if we run the thing again now, something appears in the at the console. And also, I have said that I could define that uh, some particular function in the runner script and reuse it. This way. This would be where we would prepare our file system layout, for example, in the, in, in the case where we're doing some th uh, things with the file system. And I could say foo here and reuse the, well, something, I foo. And I, I could reuse the, the function from, from all test cases. So it's pretty convenient for testing things which have side effects and which maybe whose preparation is uh, not as trivial as it could seem. And there is another feature which uh, is not on the slides uh, regarding the file system. Uh, uh, the tests are run in a sandboxed, somewhat sandboxed environment, which runs in a temporary direct directory under slash TMP. So it, it tries to isolate the testing from the rest of the file system. So you, we, you, you would not be uh, screwing things in your system. And also, if you had a different for, for each test case, there are different directories which are created. For, I, I suppose I could have the directories there. Whoops. In TMP, yeah, there are directories, like a shaft example script, and the like, but well, it's, not, it's not very clear. Well, they are here, the sixth. <laughs> so you get uh, a sandbox environment per Per test case, and each test case runs in its own environment, inheriting the environment from the runner script. So it's actually quite difficult, I would say even impossible, to one test case to, uh, affecting each other test, test, test cases, which is good. And also, one, the changes made to the file system by one test wouldn't affect the next one. And well, as a quick summary, because there's not, not, nothing, nothing more <laughs> big things to say about this. Well, uh, the implementation is somewhat hackish and it's something I would like to change, but it's not very easy. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, a, lot of uh, dang, uh, a lot of file descriptors uh, changing from numbers and going from one place to another. Because all of this is uh, working with pipes and with filters, so it's not maybe the most easy thing to understand. But for example, if if, if you take a debugger, it's code is also not easy to understand. So I I don't know whether um, this is a common thing of uh, debugging ice tools or testing ice tools of being somewhat complex. Because it's the first time I do one of those. But I think it's, uh, it's somewhat uh, usual. Um, but even being hackish, they, they save us a lot of time. For example, we were running out of time in one of our projects. Well, I work on the systems area, and we had an internal project for deploying a series of things. And we were running out of time with some scripts which were failing horribly. And, uh, and we were doing some manual testing, and we ended up having good tests. and and the thing worked after all. <laughs> and I don't know whether this is another thing which, which I don't know whether it would have a lot of application outside of some particular things because not, it's, it's not very usual to make mission critical code in shell scripts, but there exists, exists some. So I, I, don't, I don't know whether it would be applicable to a lot of cases, but at least for some of them, it may be useful. And the most important thing, after all, is that the name of the tool is catchy. And, and this is all in general. So I have, uh, we have published the code, so you can surf there and, 
and take a look at how hacky it is. And, and if you want to ask something or someone which is not here, well, uh, the, we have a, a mailing list and, and questions. <laughs> If there are some, no questions. Well, so as, as there are no questions, a final comment, uh, a final remark before before leaving, because I I should go home back back home today. I I left some some t-shirts and some notebooks at the at the front desk. So help yourself and pick pick one if you if you want. And thanks for attending.